Well, come on, you're a holy bunch, you know. Don't be blaming the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost anoints me, and I can just do what I want to do. That's fine. In the congregation, it says make a joyful noise, and that's what you're allowed to do is make noise because you can't sing. So we don't tell you you can't sing, so we say, come join the choir. But when you're in the choir, you get mad because you don't get showtime privileges with the microphone. And you're in scandal on. Hello? Now, I'm not talking about any of you. I'm talking about all the churches in this town that's got these kind of problems. This is the only holy church in the town, and this is the perfect church in the town. I'm just talking about in my church. Last week when 12,100 people went through the doors, I'm talking in my church. I got that. I got people who quit the choir, who quit the ushers, who quit Sunday school teaching. And God forbid if somebody takes their seat in their service. I've been sitting here for three years. This is my seat, and that's my parking spot. What are you doing? I have four services back to back. I understand, I understand all these mechanisms. And I have had people leave because somebody sat in their seat. I've had people leave because they have said somebody has taken their place. They've gotten offended. Not, not in here. I just, I'm just forewarning you. Jesus then says, it would be better, he goes on to say, it would be better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and cast into the sea then he should offend, or here's what he's saying. If you dig a hole and you gossip and you got diarrhea of the mouth. Oh, come on, you're not that holy. You, you, you hear worse on your sneaky HBO and Showtime on your TV than what I'm telling you right now. And you start talking about somebody and you start digging a hole and Jesus says it would be better that you commit suicide than to dig scandalons and get mad because somebody takes your spot. Somebody offends you on your job. Somebody says or does something and you go into your own rights. And Jesus says if you react, it would be better for you to get a washing machine that's as heavy as a millstone, put it in the back of a pickup truck, drive to a bridge close by, get somebody to help you get the dishwasher out of the truck and put it on the rail. You get on the rail, you put a rope around your neck, you tie it into the dishwasher, get somebody to push it off, you jump so it'll keep you on the water and you drown. I'm talking about some of you can't smile. Some of you sitting there, you're offended by the fact of whatever's going on. That something happened to you today. And you're going to let your miracle go right by, by you. Simply because you're stuck in the hole in scandal. And I came here tonight not to waste time. But I've come here tonight to let the principalities know in this city that I have come to agree with somebody. They're going to their next level. Got to hurry. All right, now, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to entertain you in just a minute, but if you just get this, and I've got to hurry because my time's running out, but let me tell you this. So all of a sudden, Mr. Holy Peter, piano player, choir director, deacon, I've been in the church a long time, Sonny. Better not nobody take my place. Peter speaks up and says, now, Lord, if somebody digs a scandal on and lies on us, by the way, you need to learn this. You can't get blessed until somebody dislikes you. Because if you don't have anybody talking about you, you're not doing nothing. Jesus said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil until somebody starts lying on you, talking about you, there is no blessing in your life. Now the people that shouted just then, they got people lying on them. 
The rest of you don't know what's going on. Now watch this. Because when you get offended, you're nothing but a stuck individual in Scandalon. Peter spoke up. Holy Ghost came on. Whoa, ha, hoo Yamaha, Yamaha, Honda, Honda. Kawasaki, Kawasaki. I'm not talking in tongues. That's motorcycle language. I'm just telling you that he spoke up. <laughs> he spoke up and tried to be spiritual. Bishop Peter, music director Peter, leader of the pack Peter. Well, Lord, Wonder if we, uh, if, 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 why don't, why don't, I tell you, Lord, why don't, you know, the law says we die unmerciful under two or three witnesses. And so that's the spiritual gauge. So, whoa, ha, whoo, I feel the, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, whoa, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Lord, a double portion is coming on me. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You don't like that? Take a benny. Glory to God. I did the Holy Spirit right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Peter said with a double portion, Lord, if we forgive them seven times, will that be enough? Jesus said, Seven times seven. Seven times seventy. Four hundred and ninety times in one waking day. There's not a human being that I know of can, that can do four hundred and ninety sins in one waking day. You cannot kill people you hate. Four hundred and ninety different individuals you hate and kill. I'm not talking about spraying bullets. And Jesus blew. Peter's mind and said you forgive them 490 times they spit on you 490 times in one day lie on you step on your foot fire you misplace you talk about you gossip about you forgive them 490 times and here is the revelation here it is what took me a lifetime you're going to get in one phrase and it'll change your life tonight. Peter said something that most people have never said in the kingdom. Peter said, if I have to forgive people that much, God, Jesus, read it. Lord, increase my faith. And the apostle said, that means they got in a discussion. They got in a bishop meeting. They got in a press party meeting. They got in a barbecue chicken meeting, pizza hut meeting. <laughs> Talked about it. And said, increase our faith. So I propose to you that the level of your faith is, is not measured by your materialism. By how much money you have. What kind of car you drive? What kind of house you live in? What kind of shoes you buy and clothes? Your faith is at the level of your forgiveness. Oh, you didn't get that. Just some of you did. The level of your faith is at the level of your forgiveness. Because if you can forgive a lot, you have a lot of faith. If you cannot forgive, you have little faith. Measure your anger. Measure your judgmentalness. Measure yourself walking into the public and people you don't know and how you address them. But do you live on the offense because you don't know who you are? You wear a chip on your shoulder and you balance it all day long to make sure you don't get it off your shoulder. Walk around with folded arms, staring down people just because you haven't been taken out for a date and you're mad because nobody will look your direction. I wouldn't look at you either, miss, because you look like you've been dipped in lemon juice and you look like a witch. Put 
some high heels on. Go to Walgreens, get some perfume. 